What's up, Bitcoin Radio? This is your man, Joe Blackburn. You're listening to WPTC, where Bitcoin lives. I'm so excited to have everybody listening to today. We're going to talk a little bit about conferences, and I've got a special guest. Uh, Adam Williams is going to join me here in a little bit. But uh, I wanted to start with, you know, just kind of overviewing why I think this is a relevant topic and where, you know, where this all fits into the crypto space and the blockchain space and Bitcoin and all the, all the above. Like, I look at where we are and who we are as a community through the, like, the lens of CCT, of Crypto Coin Trader. And of course, you know, for the listeners who aren't part of that group, I am the founder, co-founder of Crypto Coin Trader. It's a group we have about 116,000 members. But most of you right now will be members of that group already, and you can appreciate some of the things I'm saying. But, you, you know, uh, I, I really appreciate how often I get to see members of this group. Of the, of the community and meet new members and people who want to hang out and people who want to, you know, talk crypto and blockchain with me. And, you know, these are really fun experiences that I've been able to, to collect over the last two, three years. Um, I remember going to my first conference and seeing my first, I think, you know, the first person I saw that I was really like, kind of, I don't want to say enamored with, but really excited to see was, uh, was Charlie Trim. And uh, when, when Charlie Shrim, you know, I heard Charlie Shrim was at a conference and I was like, whoa, that's really cool. You know, this is one of the first guys who got into crypto. And, uh, you know, a year and a half, two years later, I'm interviewing him on CCT, right? But I say that for this point is that these conferences allow this, it's still a small enough space where you can still kind of get that that personal intimacy, you know, that personal relationship with somebody who you might think is really famous, but these are still kind of normal people. They've grown up in the space where it's been handshake to handshake, peer to peer. I mean, that's what Bitcoin is, right? And so I really love what conferences do for the community. Um, of course, yes, I, I enjoy hearing about some speakers sometimes, you know, but mo mostly I'm going to these conferences to go and get an understanding of what's new, what's happening, where the space is evolving to and, and trying to grasp a hold of, you know, why, you know, I even still love this space because um, that has to constantly evolve with the market. You have to understand and appreciate why this, this space is so important. You know, there's a, a there's a synergy between most of us and that's Bitcoin. But where we start getting political or the divides start happening are some of these other altcoin projects and some of these projects, even ones that have been around for, for a while that have kind of made their way and been really stable. Um, I still personally, you know, find Bitcoin as our as our core meeting ground. That's that's where we all can kind of say, hey, we're on the same team. And when we get a chance to go and, and talk and, and hear and listen to ideologies and principles and, and even the, the technology that's being built off the, the blockchain tech, you know, it, it all comes down to one thing for me, and it's that we all started in this space for a reason. We're all at this conference for a reason. What is that reason? And I love figuring that out. I love finding out what inspires people, what brought them there. Is this an ideology, ideological you know, movement for you? Is this a revolution? Is this something where you think you're going to get rich? I mean, there's no wrong answer on an individual basis. You know, I might have a personal, you know, um, I don't want to say judgment, opinion on why some people are in the space and why they're not or why they should be and, and they should take things more seriously. But, uh, but, Overall, it's really none of my business unless you tell me, right? Um, but that comes down to this. All right, today, Adam Williams is going to come on. He is one of the uh, founders of World Crypto Conference. And World Crypto Conference is one of those budding and really impressive um, conferences that last year had some success and, and did really well. But this year, they have built on top of it and really, really brought something for everybody. I'm not going to get too much into that. Obviously, Adam here shortly is going to. But I want to make this very clear. When blockchain wakes up, or excuse me, I shouldn't say that. When the public wakes up, can you imagine what these conferences are going to be like? And if you think about all the tech tech projects and, you know, the Apple's releasing the, the iPhone and, you know, when, when you have, you know, Microsoft, you know, launching, you know, the next Windows. I mean, people like show up in droves for these things and they get really excited and that's bound to happen in this space. And so the foundations and the, the, the future of what the blockchain conferences are going to look like are probably going to mirror a little bit what we're seeing today and have for the last decade in tech. And I don't think that's anything to be concerned or worried about. I think that's an amazing thing. And I, I look to you right now and say, what are you doing to make sure we get there? And one of the things that you can do is support these, 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 these get together, these meetups. And I'm not saying you even have to be there all the time, but you know, you know, encourage people to go, encourage people to, to go meet others, especially if you've been to a, a conference in the past, you know, tell them your experiences, be like, this was a great experience. If it was a waste of your time, maybe it was, but I can tell you this right now, most people don't find it a waste of time. Most people 
get really excited about these things. And I'm one of them. I love the blockchain conferences. I love the Bitcoin conferences. Miami, I'll never forget Miami 2018. Yeah, there was a little bit of drama, but what great things don't have some drama, right? So, I mean, it is what it is. You guys, you should be there. We're going to get into that. I don't want to spoil it too much. I did want to bring up another topic was that, you know, we, we just concluded the uh, Bitcoin radio uh, contest giveaway, not really contest, just the giveaway. And the giveaway for uh, the Bitcoin for Bitcoin radio was a huge success. You know, we had 50 ledgers, we had $5,000 in Bitcoin. We actually ended up put, giving out an additional 850 Bitcoin. And that was through different processes in another group. But, you know, I mean, that's the commitment that Bitcoin Radio is giving, now spelt specifically Patrick McLean. And I really want to give a huge shout out and thank Ledger again. That was amazing for you guys to step in and, and, and offer that, you know. It was just it was just really special to me. And then also, obviously, you know, Patrick, you'll listen to this at some point, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, but your, your commitment to Bitcoin Radio, we couldn't do this without you. And uh, I'm so glad to be, you know, partnered up with you in these in these last few months have been have been a lot of fun. And I, I can't imagine what Bitcoin Radio is going to do in the next year. You know, I need everybody here to support me. But you guys have been great so far. I really appreciate it. We've already passed, you know, Peter McCormick. Uh, I heard, you know, that we've already passed his download rate for his first month. And we're only in week two and a half right now. Right. So, a for, I mean, of course, I have a built in advantage that Peter probably didn't have. But nevertheless, you know, Peter McCormick is one of the great voices in the space. He's a lot of fun to listen to. I really have learned a lot from him and grown. And also, also, you know, he's someone I just respect. He's got a lot of really thorough, but very uh, harsh opinions at times. I like it. I mean, even if I don't agree with him, I think he's usually coming from a place of that, that at least I can respect. I'll leave it at that. All right. Anyways, we'll get into a little bit more into the con the conference here with Adam here shortly. But once again, overall, it's what I want to say. Thank you so much, Bitcoin Radio audience. It's been a great awesome fun journey so far and we're only two and a half weeks in we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this send me if you, hey also if you have some requests or if you have people who you would like to that would that would like to get on the show or just send me an email joe at bitcoinradio.com um i'll be i answer those those emails and uh you can always uh look me up on twitter or on facebook obviously a lot of you can um are already messaged me quite often, but um, we'll get into all that later. I'm rambling. Let's get on with it. Let's get Adam on the show. We have Adam Williams here. Adam Williams, uh, who is the founder of Evolve Events. They're based out of Las Vegas and uh, that started back in 2017. Um, and they're pretty well known for, for some of the conferences, the crypto events, the blockchain events that they put on, most notably World Crypto Conference, WCC, as many of you know by. And uh, we have Adam here now. And uh, Adam, what's going on, man? How's it going? Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. It's going well. Yeah, dude, it's my pleasure. And uh, I'm really excited. Obviously, you guys have a, a big event happening again in October, at the end of October. Uh, you have World Crypto Conference coming on. I'm really grateful to have you on today for a couple of different reasons. And I'll kind of outline for the audience here. Look, you know, as, as I stated earlier, you know, there are a lot of things that I love about blockchain and crypto. But my favorite thing is being being able to hang out with all of you. When we go to where, I mean, I think we were like Miami, we had over 100 and 15 different CCT members show up. I mean, that was an incredible event. It was so much fun, you know, uh, in, in New York this past, this past year in May. And then, you know, the other big, what I consider the big three, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but you have a world crypto conference in, uh, in Vegas blockchain week this year. And we'll talk a little bit about that here shortly, but Adam, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us a little bit about you, uh, where you're from and, and how you kind of maybe got started in all this. Sure, Joe. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've been building businesses for over 20 years, most notably in the marketing space and uh, actually spent a lot of a lot of time in the medical space. But uh, I was building nationwide sales teams for pharmaceutical and diagnostic. And just over, you know, about a 10 year period of doing that, uh, you know, it was a great business, but I got I got really bored dealing with doctors, nothing against doctors, but <laughs> they're just not that exciting, to be honest. And um, I'm sure. My, my, my right-hand man in my company uh, by the name of Dominic, who is, he was a co-founder of uh, Evolve Events, you know, he'd been involved in, in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency for quite some time. And he just kept prodding me in the side and saying, you know, so we really need to look at this, something we need to do in this space, something, you know, I think you'll have a lot more fun and, and excitement and in, in be involved in. And, you know, I wasn't sleeping under a rock. I, I knew about Bitcoin and I actually almost bought my first Bitcoin back in 2010. I, wish I did now, but, uh, but I didn't, you know, like anybody else, I was busy doing other things. What was, what was feeding my family and I just kind of let it go. And so, you know, 2017, when the big run up happened, um, you know, he had been already prodding me in my side for quite some time about it. And I said, you know, I'm bored with this medical thing anyways, let's, let's go do something else. So him and I literally just took a bunch of time and just went to as many events as we could and met everybody we possibly could. And 
saw what the other event organizers were doing and, you know, just gained this great respect, not only for what the event organizers were doing because of tremendous amount of work and they were putting on great events, but like you alluded to in the beginning of this was, gosh, to be there, you know, rubbing, rubbing shoulders with anybody that's anybody in this industry and all the innovation and the excitement and the fuel and the fire and, you know, this, this entrepreneurial spirit that we saw traveling around the world, going to these events, I was like, yes, we have to do something. And so uh, World Crypto Conference was born. We decided to do the first one in Las Vegas, October of 2018. Um, that was last year. And, and the, you know, we had just over 2,400 attendees there um, and a, a great experience. And, and so, you know, we decided this is the direction we wanted to go down. And, you know, Vegas is so uniquely qualified to like just host anything. You know, crypto is obviously it's not the first introduction of crypto. In fact, one of the very first co conferences I ever went to in blockchain crypto space was in Vegas back in, uh, I guess, early 2017 when conferences were just really starting to stir up. You know, obviously I had a great time. It's Vegas, right? But, you know, this year in and as we talked about just a second ago, I brought up that there's like, in my opinion, three major conferences that everybody should hit. I think, you know, World Crypto Conference has WCC has fit right into that. And you guys did a great job last year. This year, there's a little bit more of a, of a show going on. You guys got what I guess what it's called is Vegas Blockchain Week, kind of coinciding with what, what New York has done with uh, Consensus. Now you guys have this, this, this partner almost of a brand with Vegas Blockchain Week. I think it's a huge, uh, it's a huge win for you guys. And I think it shows a lot of what they think about what you're doing to have this. Why don't you kind of go into a little bit about what's happening this particular year with that was different from last year? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, our aspirations from the very beginning were to, to become the big one. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. And back in my medical sales business, I had over 300 agents across the nation. So always have done things on a grand scale. And, you know, I looked at Dominic when he, he wanted to do this thing. And we said, if we're going to do this, we need to not only, not only do it in the absolute best city, uh, the best venue, host the best parties, but um, but but be the become the biggest over time, and and so our aspiration has always been to become the CES of the blockchain event space. And for anybody that knows doesn't know CES, that's Consumer Electronics Show. Happens every January in Las Vegas. It's been running twenty twenty five years, and last year they had over one hundred eighty thousand attendees. One hundred eighty thousand, like a boatload of people that come to this thing every year. And it's become the event in the electronic space where every major company has to be there every year to make announcements on their stages and, and display what their new tech is. And so it's become this thing that companies sometimes don't even want to go to, but they have to go to, or they become irrelevant. And so that, sure. that was our aspiration from the very beginning. And we chose Las Vegas because Las Vegas is built for this. I love going to consensus. I, I, I love the, the feel of that, um, that, that event every year. It, it's, it's a great event. They bring all the best people there. The content is amazing. It's packed. But you can't fit 100,000 people in the venues in New York. <laughs> it's not built for it. So um, you know, with the aspiration of becoming the CES in this space, we knew we had to go to Vegas. Um, but there are a lot of other benefits to Vegas too, all of the excitement, the fun, and the glitz and glam that go along with it. And so – from the very beginning, we knew that we most likely couldn't get there by ourselves. And what I mean by that is that we wanted to lock arms with the best event organizers in the space, the most notable. Um, and we'll get into more about the event space as a whole as we move on. But, um, you know, this year, what we did, we planned it last year to host our own event, WCC World Crypto Conference. And we did. And we wanted to execute that, make sure everybody had a great time, and then take the feedback from that. But our aspiration was, to lock arms with the most notable event organizers and create Vegas Blockchain Week. So this year, we've done just that. Um, we have nine events happening from October 25th through October 31st at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. And I mean, some of those, some of the most notable are, you know, Litecoin Summit with Charlie Lee and Litecoin Foundation. They're doing their second cool. annual event with us. We've got Michael Turpin doing the Coin Agenda event. This is his sixth one in Las Vegas alone, and he's done dozens of them over the past six years. Um, Charlie Shrim is hosting his trading event that this will be his fifth one he's done. It's called Crypto IQ. And uh, BitShares, for, for those of your listeners that are familiar with BitShares, they're hosting their first ever North American BitShares conference with us at the Cosmopolitan during that week, along with all of our own WCC events, which is WCC. WCC DevCon, which is our multiple blockchain developer conference, 
and WCC Mine, which is our mining conference. So what we tried to do was create Vegas really Blockchain awesome. Week. That's really awesome. Yeah, we tried to create Vegas Blockchain Week so that it was all of these events, but none of them really compete with each other. There's something for everybody. And so that's where we're at today. I mean, as somebody who is very socially involved, obviously, I, I have, uh, uh, I've, I've gone to a lot of different conferences in my time. And um, in fact, I've made a, a, a really big point of making as many conferences as I can. And this summer, I've been a little bit lackluster just because I've been so busy getting Bitcoin radio off the ground, you know, with the uh, Mousebelt team and among others. Um, but I've had I've also, you know, noticed how what what makes a conference really enjoyable right and it comes down to this you know i personally and i mean i don't mean to to make this sound like anything negative because i find this as a positive but you know like what i said when the, in the very beginning of the podcast was you know i like to go and hang out with my friends i like to go and hang out in really cool places with my friends whether that be on a beach or whether that be in in miami whether that be in new york or vegas those are cool places to hang out and so socially that is like the first thing i'm going to think of right i'm going to think of you know and really when i when i put it put it down like what are the most important things to me i would even say uh, my, are my friends coming if my friends are coming i'm automatically interested you know then location is it a location i haven't been to or, or a location that i really like going to over and over again well vegas obviously hits that you know but so does miami so does new york and then you know lastly obviously the speakers and the events come into play too but socially speaking those are those are going to be my my kind of my, my pings those are the things that set me you know my radar off i was i gotta make this now how do you combat like the idea that there are kind of like regular Joes out there like myself who, although I appreciate the tech, I use it all the time. I don't necessarily need to know how everything's made, right? So uh, there's a lot of cool in cool things about that that I know some people really you know love to dig into and really find out all the intricacies. But that's just not my style. That's not exactly who I am. Now you kind of alluded to that like just a second ago that you have uh, you have several different you know. Um, events plan with the mining and with the developers and then also obviously with the world crypto con itself but how do you mix that social influence and making sure that people have a great time and then also still provide a pretty you know great event that still has a lot of uh substance and a lot of you know real you know life solutions or real life projects that are happening well that that's a great question and and you know i we hear this all the time i i personally traveled to 18 events last year all over the world and my favorite ones which there there are a few that stick out uh are the ones that had the most uh social type and, and networking and functions that are going on outside of just sitting and listening to speakers over and over i'm like you in that regard i um you know i appreciate the content i appreciate the speakers and the expertise but there are very few of those uh keynotes or panels that i sit on and go wow that was amazing um not not only because i'm not super techie um but also because it just it really does become redundant if you go to a lot of these uh, these events. So sure. it's a it's a delicate balance, but I feel that we do a really good job in that we have amazing relevant content on the stages if that's what you're there for. But uh, like yourself, I like to party. I like to network. I like to make sure the people I know are there. That or you know whether it be meeting for a cocktail to talk about a business transaction or whether it be going out and just having a darn good time at the you know closing party or whatever it may be. So for sure being in Las Vegas, that obviously helps a ton. Um, but uh, you know, we have, you know, if you're asking specifically about some of the, some of the different events that we have planned in networking and, and, and parties and et cetera, we have uh, a couple of the most notable are we're doing a, a VIP networking event at Top Golf, where Top Golf Las Vegas. If you've oh seen it, oh my it's gosh, you're amazing. kidding! I'm coming. Yeah, sign me up. Yeah. Please keep me uh, yes. keep a ticket for me. I'm coming. Yes, yeah, so we 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 rented out an entire section of Top Golf where we have open bar and food and the golf bays and everything else. So we even have an instructor on site to give people little mini golf lessons if they want. So that's going to be a lot of fun one night. Holy and then, shit. Adam, that is the yeah. coolest thing I've ever heard in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then for our closing party, we haven't even announced it yet. So you may be the first one to announce it on your podcast. But um, last year, uh, it happens during Halloween every year, which is also Bitcoin's uh, birthday. It's the release, you know, the annual release of the white paper. And so we'll not only be celebrating Bitcoin's birthday, but also our annual Cryptoween party, which is a costume party. It falls on Halloween. And last year we did Omnia nightclub at Caesars Palace and we had Steve Aoki. This year, we've moved it over to Chaos Nightclub at the Palms, which is their brand new nightclub that they built as a part of their $672 million renovation. 
and we're taking over Chaos Nightclub, and we have Marshmello and Cardi B. So again, that's oh going to be a mic drop when we show. <laughs> so if you want to come okay, have so, a good time, you're definitely going to have a good time in Las Vegas. Okay. So clearly we have the social aspect covered. All right. I'm sold. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You've got Marshmallow and you've got Cardi B showing up. Well, this is legit. All right. And I'm proud to be the first ones that you told it to on a public level, man. Thank you. <laughs> of course. All right. So uh, obviously, you know, as, as we speak, in, as we've spoken about, you know, throughout this, you know, there's a lot of things happening in, in World Crypto Con Conference this year. And um, I think it's really special that you guys have really been able to catapult off of the success of last year and bring this a little bit more, uh, you know, on a uh, on a level that is what's the word, you know, really, re really relevant. I mean, it's it's clear that you guys have put a lot of work into this and you know i know sometimes this can get a little bit um i don't want to say boring but you know the the intricacies inside of how this all comes together obviously sometimes can be a little bit long-winded etc but you know without doing that too on a on a high level because i'm sure you could talk about this for days but let's kind of kind of dive into what it takes to put something like this on dude like adam it seems to me like to be able to even get a hold of cardi b or to get a hold of marshmallow as popular as they are obviously and then to to schedule you know and get I mean, obviously it costs a lot of money. Obviously these people expect to, you know, to have like probably pretty nice accommodations, et cetera, but just, not just on the entertainment side, but now you got vendors, now you've got speakers, now you've got to get all this stuff put together. I mean, what this, what, how long does this even take to do, man? Two, five years. I, I mean, it seems like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Great, great question. And, and I always say, whenever I do interviews or anything, you know, I talk about these other events that we attend and, and we go to, and we go to pretty much all of the major ones. Like, matter of fact, I just got back from Toronto from the Futurist Conference. For any of your listen listeners that haven't been there, Tracy LaPerlo and her team do a phenomenal job. It's one of the best conferences I've been to. Um, but for any event organizer, small, big, I don't care if you're 100 people for a one day or you know 5,000 people over a whole week, doesn't matter what it is. I kudos to event organizers because it is a boatload of work um, and, you know, for us that go to these things, which I come from the other side, I used to just attend a bunch of, of events and conferences in the medical space. You go there for one, two, three days and it's like, oh, that was great. But what you don't understand is there is a year's worth of work that goes into that two or three days. So, you know, we have a we have a small but mighty internal team. It's, it's about nine or 10 of us. Um, and we, you know, we work really well together. But, yeah, there there are just so many um moving parts and you you learn as you go to to execute better and better on the different things i think the most important thing that i've found is you know you obviously have to provide fun entertainment and relevant content for your attendees and for your speakers and your sponsors you really have to roll out the red carpet and make them feel special and important and you know white glove service all the way through so for us we have an entire speaker concierge team an entire spon uh, sponsor concierge team. So yeah, we only have nine or 10 people on our internal staff throughout the year, but when it comes showtime, we have a team of over 80 on site. And so it's really just, you know, learning how to take care of people, I think, make them feel special, make them feel important, make them feel like, wow, I've, you know, I've spoken at 10 events this year and this one really stood out because they took care of me. You know, they treated me like a king or a queen and they, they made everything easy. I didn't have to wonder about things. So, you know, that's really our secret sauce is just making people feel special, whether you're an attendee, a speaker, a sponsor, an entertainer, doesn't matter. If you're coming to one of our events, we want to make sure that you feel like, wow, this is something I have to attend every single year. Yeah. And, you know, Baz, obviously Baz View, everybody, many of you are going to know Baz. He's the scam man, as we like to like we, we like to play with him because he always says scam on everything. It's a lot of fun. But Baz is a really good friend to not just myself, but to Crypto Coin Trader. He's, he, he helps out in some capacity. I don't even know the official role if there is, even is one, but I know he he is very much. Uh, I don't want to say invested as in financially. He's invested as in on emotionally and on a on a personal level. He loves World C Crypto Conference. This is one of his favorite things to do. He's he's talked about you guys ever since last year, before way before the uh, the conference even happened in 2018. But uh, but Baz, you know, was was telling me all the great things that were going to happen. I was like. I mean, it sounds great, but in crypto, guess what you always hear? You hear a lot of great things. And what actually ends up happening sometimes is that you don't get a lot of a lot of that substance. You know, it's a lot of just talk. And Adam, I, I know for a fact what you're saying and the person who you are and the little that I've got a chance to know you, that you're going to do exactly what you just said you're going to do. And that is to put on a world-class event. It's going to change the way people see crypto, crypto conferences at least, you know. And, you know, with that being said, Adam, like let's kind of talk about how crypto conferences and blockchain conferences have evolved. Like back in 2017, I remember my first event, it was in Vegas, although it was interesting. It was pretty amateur 
there were sponsors sort of the the speakers were okay you know and i don't want to hate on them because people were still figuring out what people needed to hear back then you know um i won't say it wasn't entertaining because it was that but it was very amateur and i don't want to speak badly as in like that was a negative i enjoyed myself and my time when i was there but uh there was maybe maybe 300 of us and you know, I just happened to be in town that weekend, actually. And that's why I ended up showing up, sat down and, you know, I had fun time, got to meet a bunch of people. But, you know, watching that and then, you know, then taking it to January, uh, the first, second week of January 2018, there we had, uh, you know, North American Bitcoin conference, conference in Miami. And that was epic. That was absolutely huge. It was probably the most... I don't want to see my my favorite conference of all time, but it was the most impactful. I met a lot of people there. I made made a lot of great relationships in Miami, and you know, and then I saw uh, consensus in 2018, and then obviously you guys had World Crypto Conference in uh, 20 in, in October 2018 as well. But what have you seen over the last couple of years of this evolution into where we are now? Yeah, there there has been quite a bit of evolution, and I'd start by saying you know a huge huge shout out to guys like Mo from Keynote that you know, started, Absolutely. started no the first Bitcoin conference when Bitcoin wasn't that cool. You know, it was, a, he even says it better. It was a bunch of nerds in a row. It was like, you know, talking about, Hey, you guys on the Bitcoin forum, you guys want to get together? You know, we can just, you know, meet each other once a year. And, you know, you had a handful of people in the room. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of notoriety and there wasn't a lot of, you know, people weren't paying for tickets to go to these things. It was just like, Hey, let's meet up where we can once a year. We always talk to each other over the forum. So might as well get together. So the pioneers in this space, like Mo that, you know, had the foresight to go out and put it together and organize events. And I mean, you know, great for him and what, what that's grown into over the years. I mean, like you said a couple of times, North American Bitcoin conference is great. It's a, it's a staple. It's huge. It's in Miami, which is fun. Um, anybody that's everybody is there. I would encourage anybody who hasn't been get out to that event. It happens early in the year. Um, I was there this year and it's phenomenal. So, um, but as far as the evolution of these events, I, I think, you know, like anything, when when a lot of people started diving into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and the big ICO blaze was going on in 2017, all of a sudden you it, you went from, you know, five or 10 events a year to 300 to 400 that popped up. And I said it early on when we were evaluating getting into the space, I said, you know, that's great, but this thing, you know, what goes up must come down and Bitcoin is a nice little roller coaster in crypto. And with the events, what's going to happen, I said, was we're going to see these three, 400 events come in and give it a year to 18 months. And you're going to all of a sudden see that start to consolidate. And you're going to get, you're going to whittle it down to at least here in the United States. I believe there are going to be five, four to five events that are here to stay. And, you know, North American Bitcoin conference, a hundred percent is one of those consensus is a hundred percent going to be here. And, and we certainly believe that that world crypto conference and Vegas blockchain week will be one of the biggest and best, if not the biggest and best. So we we're excited about the space. We're excited to see all the different events popping up. And then the, the consolidation of that, you just kind of, you just kind of whittle it down to the best of the best and people pick and choose where to spend their dollars to travel and to attend these events. So we're excited to put on a good show for everybody and be a part of that and, and definitely plan on being here for the long haul. For sure. And you made some really great points in that. And I agree with the overwhelming majority of what you just said. You know, I, I also, um, you know, watch the same, you know, evol evolution, obviously from the outside looking in, you've kind of experienced it looking to create something. And so it's really awesome to get your unique perspective on this, uh, Adam, but, you know, I'll even, even mention this part too, is that there are reasons why these conferences, the good ones are going to stick around and you have put together not only a good team, but you put together a good plan. And you know, this is as good as anybody, as far as conferences go, if you plan on doing more than one, your investment into next year is this year. Right. And I mean, you could say the same thing about last year. Every year that you do a conference is your name brand. That's what people are going to remember. And it's just moments and people are going to remember minimal things, you know, that, that, you know, all the planning and all the things that come into it. And they're going to remember one thing, something, hopefully it's a good thing, you know, but I, what I like about your structure and the way that you kind of position yourself is that number one, you're doing it in a place that is well known for these types of events. Like you said, CES and to, to kind of even, in, even piggyback off that comment you made earlier in the podcast, I'll say this, you know, crypto is kind of dying for something like that. Like we, we were begging for a, like a show off, you know, type of venue where you can show off your new and great products, you know, and, and projects and, and really, and I love the way that back in, um, in, in January of 2018, when Mo in the North American Bitcoin conference, they had that, that competition for these projects, you know, it was just so interesting. It was so unique. It was so new to me on that size. I mean, it was a packed house. 
like to, to put 5,000 people into that, that room, you know, and to, to really have them paying attention for the entire day. I was so impressed, it even captivated me. And that's one of the very few times that I've actually sat down for a couple hours at a time and just watched and listened and absorbed on that level. Um, and so obviously you guys have taken a little bit from every conference and you've, you're putting it and you're shaking it around and you're, and you're, you created your own, your own monster for, you know, on, on Halloween, right? It's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I look forward to that, that time. And so I'll move into this last question for you before we kind of get in, into the, uh, the quick fires, as I told you we were going to have, but, um, what do you think are some of the reasons why people attend conferences today? You know, I ask this question over and over and over and overwhelmingly the answer is always networking. I 9.9 times out of 10, it's networking and being in the same room with people because a lot of what we see is, is, is B2B. And, you know, these people talk to each other over the phone or over email or discord or, you know, telegram or whatever your preference preferred chat method is, but they don't meet face to face unless they actually go to these events. So, you know, everybody knows that's been to these things. It doesn't matter what Bitcoin's doing, what crypto is doing. I, I travel to events all the time. And when we were in the gutter, you know, in the last year, beginning of this year, and I was traveling around to different events, you didn't hear anybody complaining. Everybody was excited to be there. It didn't matter if Bitcoin went to $3,000. Everybody was excited to be there. They're, you know, they're rubbing friends with, rubbing, rubbing shoulders, not only with their friends that they knew, but also new people that, that they didn't know. So the networking aspect in my opinion is overwhelmingly the number one reason that people go to these events you just don't get that anywhere else if if i had told you my answer it would have been the same thing you know like that's that was really well said adam and uh, the the last thing i'll i'll kind of use that question and i'll say this what would you tell somebody who might want to come but you know they don't know if it's going to be worth well yeah cardi b's cool marshmallow's cool networking's cool but like is it really yeah. going to appeal to somebody who doesn't really have a real technical background Yes. I mean, my answer would be that those, those, those parties that we mentioned and the fun aspects of it, those are just the cherry on the Sunday. You know, if you're, if you're involved in cryptocurrency, if you're, you know, interested in the tech underlying technology, you know, blockchain, if you're thinking about starting a business or you're already maybe trading or you're a developer, whatever it may be, you will absolutely leave feeling alive. And that and that's a really good description of it. When you come to an event, it doesn't have to be ours. When you come to one of these events and you're in a room with 100, 200, 500, 5,000 people for a few days, you leave feeling invigorated. You leave feeling, inv- uh, you know, just ready to go and alive and motivated. And to me, well that's the value in itself. Well said. Very well said. Adam, like uh, I've, I've, I'll say this and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Like I wish you the best of success on this because – I look at what you're trying to do and in your motivations and, and how you're, you're accomplishing your goals. Uh, and it, it seems to all kind of fit the right mold. And this is uh, this is spectacular, man. I look forward to being at this event this year and I can't wait to be there, obviously, like as I just said, but I know a lot of my friends are looking forward to it too. And I know listening to this, I, I can only imagine how excited they're going to get. Yeah, thank you, Joe. We're excited to have you. And, and obviously everybody that surrounds you excited to have them and welcome them to Las Vegas. Absolutely. Okay. So, we got to do my quick fire. This is where I get to kind of hear about who you are as a person. My audience gets to fight, figure out if they agree with you or disagree with you. You know, no pressure or anything, Adam. You know, got to have some fun a little bit, though. But tell me, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Number one, best reason to attend WCC. Networking. Boom. Yeah, you just kind of nailed that one, didn't you? All right. Number two, if you didn't have this, vi- this, uh, this conference in Vegas, where else would you have decided to do it? Ooh, that's a tough one. I I think, you know, if Mo wasn't already doing North American Bitcoin conference in Miami, I would, I would probably choose Miami just because it's such an epic spot and it's beautiful down there, but don't worry, Mo, we won't come into your territory. (laughs) That's a good answer though. I agree with you. And there's, I mean, just because, you know, he's doing it doesn't mean you can't do one in the other half of the year either, but uh, I know Mo, Mo would not like that too much. Anyways. All right. Moving into a little bit more of lighthearted stuff. Top three movies of all time. Ooh, I have so many. I would say, um, Wall Street, the original one, not the second one. It wasn't as good. Classic. Boiler Room, Boiler Room, definitely, and Pulp Fiction. You got to go with Pulp Fiction. Hey, all classics, man. I, I can't, I can't. Uh, you know, Pulp Fiction has become quite a uh, um, a regular appearance on my quick fires, so I understand. All right, moving on. Bitcoin as a political party, yes or no? One hundred percent, yes. Nice. All right. Have aliens or extraterrestrials ever landed on planet Earth? You know, it's funny. That's actually a really good question. 
we just got an email from some aliens that asked for comp VIP tickets to World Crypto Conference. So <laughs> the answer is yes. We haven't decided if we're giving them there tickets or not. But yeah. Oh, you got to <laughs> give them tickets. You got to give them tickets. I'll room with them. Tell them that I got extra. I got an extra bed in my hotel room. Yeah, we'll put them All in right, the bag. Last one. Scam. There you go. Actually, that's the <laughs> scam. That's 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 probably the better. Per- that's the better answer right there. All right. Can Bitcoin ever reach a million dollars? My thought is a hundred percent yes. And quick reason behind that is just scarcity, pure, pure and scarcity. Fair, 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 fair. I agree with you. And, uh, and we, we all don't want we all don't want McAfee to, to have to eat his own junk. So we better hope it uh, reaches a million. <laughs> you know, oddly, there's there's quite a few people who would disagree with that. I, I can't understand. Like, if if he wins, we all win, right? You know, it's the haters, I guess, but but nevertheless, anyways, I won't keep you any longer, Adam. I'm so grateful that you came on Bitcoin radio. I appreciate your audience and your attention. Uh, this is a conference. This is a, a place. This is a event that I'm going to be at. I want you there too. We're going to be doing some live stuff there. We're going to be doing some cool stuff with Bitcoin radio in at, at world crypto conference in Vegas during that week. And I hope to see you there. And if you have any questions, obviously where can you can get a hold of me and I can point you the right direction, but Adam, where can they get a hold of you at? Sure. Yeah. They can just, uh, re- the website is uh, worldcryptocon.com or WCC vegas they'll both get you there you can email any questions to our team at info at evolve e-v-o-l-v dot events info at evolve dot events all right awesome awesome thanks again adam i appreciate you coming on a hey, uh, and hopefully i'll have baz on uh, cct pretty soon to do a, a video about it because we want to kind of tell the, the the group you know a little bit about what we're doing try to rally the troops a little bit see if they want to come with us and who does and get that group chat going so we can we can maintain a uh, understanding about who's going to be there, but I would love for you to be on that video too, Adam, if you can make time for it. I'm sure you're very, very busy leading up to these last couple months, but uh, I'm really grateful that you're here, man. Uh, Thank you, Joe. Feelings mutual. Well, we'll see you soon, man. Until next time. All right, Bitcoin radio, have a great day. You know where Bitcoin lives. It's here. WBTC. We will see you next time. The cryptoverse belongs to all of us. It's our job to take care of it. We'll see you next time.